When approaching EQ, novice mixers always want to know the best frequencies to dial up to get the best tone for various instruments. Of course, there's no simple answer to that. It depends on the individual recordings, the particular mix, and even the musical style of the project. But that said, I'll offer a few very general suggestions for some common instruments. Drums typically get a lot of EQ, going from the mid-rangey, often boxy sound of an acoustic kit to the brighter, fatter, more in-your-face drum sounds we're used to hearing on pop albums. Kick is typically beefed up in the lows, and a bump around 2 to 5k is often added to bring out the slap of the beater for more clarity of the kick part in a busy mix. Snare is often boosted slightly in the upper mids, maybe 3 or 4k, for presence. And sometimes the lower mids are boosted for thump. With a dip in the mids, between 500hz and 1k, for a less cardboardy sound. Symbols in the overheads often get a subtle boost around 8k and above for air, which also affects the drums those mics pick up as well. Electric bass is likely to be adjusted in the bass and lower mid-range, depending on the original sound and the kind of bass tone desired. Boost below 100 Hz for a fat tone. Or around 200 to 250 Hz or so for a more punchy quality. As with kick, a little extra presence around 5k or so can bring out the attacks of the notes, the sound of the fingers or the pick. The tonal balance of an electric guitar is often dialed up with the tone stack on the amp, or virtual amp, itself. But general purpose EQ can also be used to dial up broad curves in the mids and upper mids to help a track fit better in the mix. or to distinguish two similar or doubled parts. A common EQ technique on many instruments is to dial up opposing boost and cuts at the same frequencies on similar tracks to carve out room for each part in the mix. Acoustic guitar can be EQ'd with a little low-end boost to bring out fullness, maybe for a solo part.
Or the opposite approach can be taken, a large cut in the low end. This is often applied to strumming background acoustic guitar parts, turning them into more percussive elements in a busy mix, avoiding a buildup of too much low end boom. For me, vocals usually get the least EQ. If they've been recorded with a good studio condenser mic, the kind of presence that helps a vocal in the mix is typically built into the mic itself. On the other hand, if you have to deal with a live vocal captured on a dynamic mic, then a bit of extra presence and top may be needed, along with a low end roll off to compensate for the usual proximity effect, the excess bassiness that results from singing right up against a directional mic. By this time, figured I was through. Never find anybody new. Naturally, the full featured channel EQ can handle all of these standard tasks with ease. But there's more to the channel EQ than just the basics. There are a number of additional features and settings that make it even more versatile. I'll pick up there in the next video. <laughs>